Okay, here we are, Math 6, Unit 1, Lesson 18, our last lesson on the video side of things for this unit. So let's write a formula to find the surface area of a cube. All right, that's our idea today. So exponent review, select the greater expression of each pair without calculating the value of each expression. Be prepared to explain your choices. So first of all, looking at these, decide which one is the larger value. You don't have to figure it out, just looking at them, what do you see? So for A, we notice this is 10 times 3. And over here we have 10 to the third power. 10 to the third power actually means what? It means 10 times 10 times 10. So just looking at that there, again, no calculations, I'm thinking that when I multiply 10 by itself three times, I end up with a bigger number than 10 times three. So I would go with this one being a little bit bigger than that one there. And by a little bit, we mean a lot. Over here, we have 13 squared or 12 times 12. Well, 12 times 12, can be rewritten as 12 squared, right? Just like 13 squared. So 12 squared compared to 13 squared, we'd probably say 13 squared because it's a bigger number is gonna be a bigger answer. All right, and over here we have one, two, three, four, five, six of the 97s, right? And multiplication is simply repeated uh, ad addition. So this is 97 times six. And over here we have five times 97. So here I have six of them, here I have five of them. Let's go with six of them because that's gonna be bigger than five. At least most of the time, that's how that works. All right, so uh, number two, the net of a cube. A cube has an edge length of five inches. Draw a net for this cube and label its sides with measurements, okay? So the net of a cube, and there are lots of different ways to draw this one. This is just the one I typically draw for my cube nets. I'll draw four, which usually is for the, you know, the four sides around a cube, right? One, two, three, four. So I just do four for what's around there. Then I got to make sure I add a square for the top and bottom. And I usually just add my square tops and bottoms, one on this side, and then one over here just for looks. All right. I could put it over here as well. It wouldn't make a difference. Now, because it's a five inch cube, I'm going to have every length it has a length of five every single side has a length of five, like so. All right, what is the shape of each face? Each face is gonna be the shape of a square, because it's a cube. The area of each face, area is gonna be five times five, and that's inches, so that'll be 25 inches squared. What is the surface area of the cube? Surface area is found by doing what? We do 25 inches squared, the area of one face, times the number of faces that it has. One, two, three, four, five, six. So 25 times six is actually gonna be 150 square inches. And the volume of the cube is found by doing the length and the width and the height. They're all inches. So five inches times five inches times five inches it's going to be 125 inches squared. Okay, so that's the idea for how we take a net, and we take a cube, turn it into a net, and just find the answers or find the various parts of that net and what makes it work the way that it does. Okay, let's use that now for the second activity, or the second part of this activity. It says the second cube has a length, edge length of 17. Now that's not as nice of a number to work with, is it? I like the fives and the twos and the threes. 17 is just not quite so pretty. But it says draw a net for this cube. Now, I would recommend not drawing one in uh, kind of proportion with this one here, right? But let's just draw the same net. And remember, this is your drawing, so you get to label it your way and define the links the way you want to define them. So if you notice here, what am I doing? I'm drawing the same exact net that I drew up there, right? And you go, oh, it's the same. Uh, no, it's not. You know why? Because now it's 17 units long. Every side is 17. Wow, what a handy trick that is. That's the way that works. When you draw the picture, you get to define the length of everything. Now, if I had to use um, grid paper or a ruler, it would look different. The two would look different. But it's just a sketch, and there we are. So there's my lovely drawing of a cube that is 17 units long. B. Explain why the area of each face of this cube is 17 square units. So why would we say that the area of 
one of these cubes here is 17 squared units. Why would we say that? Well, hopefully you're saying, well, that's because when we multiply the length and the width together, length times width, it's 17 times 17. And when you do that, that's the same as writing 17 square units. That's how surface area is found. Okay, not too, not too bad. So because it's a square, it works out that way. It doesn't work for all shapes, but it works for the squares. C, write an expression for the surface area in square units. Okay, so the surface area, in our case here, we would say that it's going to be 17, well, numerically, um, is 17 times 17, but it's also times the number of squares, which is, or faces, which is 6. So we could say 17 squared times 6, and that would be an expression for that surface area. We could say it's an expression. Why? Because we're actually not solving it. We're just leaving it like that. And finally, write an expression for the volume in cubic units. And so expression of this volume we could write down as 17 times 17 times 17. So that would be 17 cubed and this is going to be units and so we could say units cubed if you wanted to put the label there something like that right so in general surface area is surface area squared and volume is going to be the side length cubed that's how I figure those things out there and here it is with just some numbers right there as an example alright which moves us into number three activity every cube in the world. So a cube has an edge length of S. Draw a net for the cube. Boy, let me get really complicated here. I'm going to be super creative. I bet you've never seen this cube before, this net. I know, it's amazing. It's one of a kind. I have never drawn this picture except, oh wait, I did it two other times. Okay, well, that's alright. I forgot. Short term memory. Here we go. So, net for the cube is going to be, hmm, I need to have some links here. S, 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 Lots of S's all the way around. Way to go. Write an expression for the area of each face. An expression means I don't need an equal sign. So, for the area of each face would be S times S. Handy. But S times S is the same as S squared. How about an expression for the surface area? Hmm, surface area. Well, surface area is the area of the face times six. Usually, when we have numbers and letters together like that, we write the number first and the letter second. So, six S squared. And then for the volume, we have length times width times height, or S cubed. And that's going to be our basic expression for every cube in the whole wide world, just like that. All right. So in summary, what we just did, the volume of a cube with an edge length of S is S cubed. And there it is, right there. And a cube has six faces that are all identical squares. The surface area is six times S squared, just like that. So that's the net that they drew. Doesn't quite match mine. That's because I did the same one again and again and again. That's it for today. Have a great one. Let's uh, pause there, sorry, and work on the homework, and we'll check it in just a minute. All right, homework time for lesson 18. It says, what is the volume of the cube with an edge length of eight inches? So volume is found by multiplying the edges together three times. So 8 times 8 times 8 times 8. 8 times 8 is 64 and 64 times 8 is 512 inches cubed. What is the volume of edge length? 1 third centimeter. So now they threw a fraction in there. Oh no, what am I going to do? I'll multiply 1 third times 1 third times 1 third. So straight across the top here, 1 times 1 is 1. And 3 times 3 is 9, times 3 is 27, keeping our units centimeters cubed. Not too bad, huh? If a cube has a volume of 8 feet cubed, what's the edge length? So we're asking here, 
how can I take the eight and break it into the same number three times, right? So how do I get there? Well, my options are things like one times one times one equals one. A two times two is four times two is eight. And I think we found our answer. So the edge length in this case would be two feet. And why is it two feet? Because we use feet there and two times two times two is equal to eight. Number two. What three-dimensional figure can be assembled from this net? Hey, for the first time, it's not a triangular prism. This is actually going to be, brrr, drum roll, a cube. Wow, how do we know that? Because we have squares all over the place. These are all squares, and there are six of them. So that is a cube. So excited that it's not a triangular prism. If each square is a side length of 61, oh boy, 61, that's gonna be lots of fun. Please don't make me multiply that. Write an expression, yes, for the surface area and another for the volume. All right, I can do that. So surface area, surface area will be the area of the face, 61 squared times six, because there are six of those. Huh, I can do that. And the volume, would be a side length times a side length times a side length, so 61 cubed. And we leave it just like that, that's all we have to do. That's the best news of the whole day, right? So that's what I got. I could write down the units centimeters cubed here, um, and I could put that up with centimeters squared as well. Um, square, centimeters, yeah. So centimeters squared times six. All right, great, number three. Draw a net for a cube with a length of x and find out the surface area and the volume. Oh boy, I'm gonna get original again. Here we go, watch out. There's a square, there's a square, there's a square, there's a square. That wraps around my whole cube and let's put a top on it and a bottom on it. Awesome, edge lengths. X, 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 Lots of X's, lovely. Surface area. Surface area is gonna be the area of one surface, x squared, times six. And it's centimeters squared, so we'd say centimeters squared. So six x squared, centimeters squared. Volume would be x centimeters, three times. So x cubed, centimeters cubed for the volume. Awesome. Number four. Here's a net for a rectangular prism that was not drawn correctly, accurately. Oops, someone messed up. Explain what is wrong with a net. Well, I don't know, but a net seemed like a nice person to me, so I don't want to say anything wrong with a net. That's a joke. So, the net. All right, so the net, not a net. All right, not to be confused. So, what is wrong with the net? Well, when we look here, we see that we have the tops and bottoms are little squares, right? That's great to have a nice little square there. But here's the dilemma. If I take this little square and try to make that a top or a bottom, well, if I fold this side up, I need to make sure that when it folds up that that square can actually cover up that space, which it's just not gonna work out, is it? Just not gonna work out. So what's wrong is basically my top and bottom are too small for this net the way it's drawn there. So draw a net that can be assembled into a regular uh, regular prism, okay? So to draw that net, what I need to actually do is, what I notice here when I spun it, it looks like if I double that up, I'd be okay. So let's see if that actually works. I'm gonna draw it out to here. Let's see. All right, so the question is, would this work? Hmm. If I had that there, that would definitely cover up that line and that line, yep, it certainly would. So what you wanna do is we're gonna extend this down to here. I'm not gonna draw a whole nother one, but I'm gonna say this should be the shape that I'm doing instead. And I could do another one up here, just like that. And that's one way of doing it. There are other ways of doing it. This is just one way of doing it, right? So that works out great create another one. Oh boy, let's do it. All right, so we have this big square. We have a big square there. We have a little bit rectangle, which is half the width, no problem. Another big square, a little half the width rectangle. 
okay? Last time we did the tops and bottoms there. I could actually make my top and bottom like this. I can make it so that it already has the right length there and this length matches that length so when it rotates around, folds around, it would work out, okay? That was just an example. Are there other ways of doing it? Sure there are. That's just one quick example. Not beautifully done, but it works. Thank you, Annette, for allowing us to use your name. Number five, state whether each figure is a polyhedron. Polyhedron, explain how you know. Hmm, well, to be a polyhedron, we're going to need some straight lines there. Uh, that seems to have lots of straight lines. Over here, curvy, and this whole thing is curvy. So this one is not a polyhedron because it has the curves, it has these rounded shapes, just not going to work out there. This one would be a polyhedron because we're talking about having straight sides. It's composed of different polygons there, and all the sides come together and join up at different vertices like so. Okay, so B is the best one. And again, you want to explain it in words that you actually write out, not just talk. Number six, our last one for the day. Here is Elena's work for finding the surface area of a rectangular prism that is one foot by one foot by two feet. Lovely. She concluded the surface area of the prism is 296 square feet. That is enormous for a one by one by two foot prism. Do you agree with her conclusion? Explain your reasoning. All right, so let's see what happened here. When we look at Elena's work, what we notice is that the prism is a one foot by one foot by two feet shape. Here she has her one foot length and a one foot there and a two foot there. So it looks like we're drawing things so far okay. But when I look at the top though, I got 12 inches and 12 inches. Now 12 inches is the length of a one foot, that's true. But you notice she uses the 12 inches here in her um, equation to find out the area of the face. She has a 12 by 12 on the top and of course there's one on the bottom as well. So she ends up with 288 as the area of the top and bottom. But the problem is is that those are inches, right? 288 inches. For the four sides of the face she has two times one which is right and has four of those so this is right the eight inch eight feet but these are all in feet so she has eight feet and then 288 inches so if you just add the numbers up 288 plus 8 is 296 but that's adding up inches and feet which are different units you can't do that so would we agree with her we would say no we don't agree with her and in reality if she did this properly well the top is what's the area of the top the top is actually and the bottom for that matter is actually one foot one foot times one foot which has an area of one foot there are two of them so you'd have a total of two feet and when you add that to the eight feet that are over here already on the faces you'd have ten feet squared for the surface area there so converting that into inches really messed her up there. Not quite what she should have done. All right, that's it for that one and it for that lesson and unit. Hope you have a great day and you have a test right coming up soon. So good luck with that and we'll see you next time.